Hi, hello, one I've come and welcome back to yet another episode on Little Sla YouTube channel. So today in this video we are going to see about the requirement collection document. And recently when I was talking to one of our subscribers, so they wanted me to share the requirement collection document. So in this video I will share the questions that are asked to the clients or the stakeholders or the business analyst. And let's start with the very first question. So the very first question comes with the business objectives and goals. So when it comes to business objectives and goals, these are the questions that we have to ask. And the very first question is, what are the main objectives of the application or system? So this should be your first question. You should understand the main objective of the application, which is it involves, you will have to understand the application, right? So you'll have to either make this as part of your questionnaire or you can or you have to ask this question to the business analyst or the stakeholder who can explain you and just make a note of it like what is the main objectives of the application or the system so that should be your first question and when it comes to the second question which is the application overview so the first question as part of the application overview should be can you provide a high level overview of the application architecture because you should understand the architecture of the application on or whether it, it's an on-prem or whether it's in the cloud and what is the web server what is the app server or what's the database server and you have to understand how does it get configured so that's the very first part and then you should understand the key components and the technologies that are used in the application like whether it's built on java or dotnet or python or whatever and what are the key components which are part of the application so all these has to be identified and addressed during this questionnaire and now moving to the third part which is user scenarios and workflows and this is the most most critical part of your questionnaire because you have to identify the typical user journeys or the workflows within the application that is like something which goes like it starts from the login and then it goes it does the user does, does some transactions he makes some transaction and then he does a logout so similar to this you have to identify what are all the workflows and the typical user journeys and also you have to identify what are the specific business processes that are critical for the performance testing say for example you have like tens or 20 app transactions and you have to understand which particular business processes critical as part of this performance testing and then moving on to the fourth part which is the expected user load so this is again i would say another critical part so whatever we discuss here are the most critical part but this is one more thing you should understand what is the expected number of concurrent users under normal operation and also you should understand how does the user load vary during peak usage period so when it comes to the first question like what's the expected number of concurrent users and normal op operations you should understand the total workload of the application and also you should get the breakup of user load for each transactions this is very critical you have to get this during your requirement collection you should not wait until you are creating your scripts and waiting for load test this should be clearly identified and noted because only it's not too critical for the scripting but it's very important for your load testing and moving on to the fifth question which is user profiles so you should identify the different types of users and their respective roles or their access levels and this is important because the transactions differ based on the user type or the user role or the access level and you should understand like are there any specific user behavior or user usage patterns that should be considered for any of the users so for this you should understand like if there are like several users and you should understand whether they are categorized into different categories and are you supposed to use all those categories for all the transactions or are you supposed to use a particular set of users for a particular set of transactions so this is again very critical part that you have to understand and moving on to the sex sixth question which is the response time requirements so you should understand what are the acceptable response time for the key actions or transactions within the application 
and you also should ask for any performance benchmarks or SLAs that we need to meet at the end of the performance testing. So you have to confirm uh, and uh, you have to also understand the acceptable response time for each transactions or for the entire workflow. So for example, like if they want five seconds as the response time for all the transactions or it should be like five for a few transactions, three for a few transactions, three seconds and one second for a particular transaction. So you should understand the acceptable response times are the SLA for each and every transactions that they are giving us and that's again very critical because this has to be your benchmark or your SLAs for all the transactions that you're running and then moving on to the next part which is the seventh one which is the throughput requirements so here you should understand the goals of your testing so what type of goals so how you should understand how many transactions or requests per second should the system be able to handle or how much should you test or how much do you need to test and you should also understand like is there any specific throughput goals that we need to achieve like for example they might ask you that i should achieve 10,000 hits in one hour with 100 users so these kinds of requirements has to be collected as part of this throughput requirements so like i have told you you should understand how many transactions are requests per second which is the throughput should the system is required to test or you should also understand what is the throughput goal that you need to achieve at the end of the test whether you have different load test or for every load test and moving on to the next part which is the scalability requirement so the previous question has come up for your load test and this question comes for your scalability testing so you should test how should the system scale with increasing user load or data volume say for example if you are doing your test with 100 users so you should ask what that what can be the scalability test results and it can be 150 50 increase or 100 percent increase so you should test that and moving on to the next part which is the stress tolerance so you should ask for what is the maximum load the system should be able to handle before performance degrade that's you should ask what can be the maximum load that you can test for your testing for your stress testing are and also you should also check is there any specific stress testing scenarios that you need to simulate because not all the scenarios that need to be stress tested some can be load tested and some scenarios has to be stress tested so you should either check whether is there any specific stress testing scenarios to be simulated or you can also confirm that whether all the scenarios that you have as part of your load test has to be stress tested and also you should check what can be the maximum load to do the stress testing and moving on to the next part which is the geographical consideration so this part as i have already told you whether you are doing it in cloud so in those scenarios you should understand like is the application is being accessed from different regions or countries so based on that you'll have to change your load generators and do your testing and this is very critical because if you're running your test from us and the lgs are in a different zone so that will be automatically increase in response time so you should understand this particular part and then you'll have also have to understand that whether you have to consider the performance variation based on geographical location for example like in us the response times can be lesser and in other geographies it can be a little bit higher compared to those previous the other zones so you have to understand the performance variation based on each and every geographical location if that is being distributed to different geographies and moving on to this next question which is the network constraints so you have to check whether there are any network bandwidth limitations or any latency requirements that we should be aware of So this question mostly deals with what type of network are you going to test so it, whether it should be like a 5g uh, network or it can be a wi-fi network or there are like different network emulations that particularly you can see that in load runner and new load so you'll have to understand like what can be the network bandwidth that you're going to test so this has to be confirmed like whether you're going to do it through the browser or through the mobile network and then moving on to the next question which is the 12th question that is the data security so in most of the projects there are reasons there are like chances where you might be 
very concerned about the data security so you have to understand like what security measures or protocols are in place that might affect the performance testing and also you should check whether there is there any security related performance concerns that needs to be addressed before we start doing the performance checks for example if you are in into a domain where there are like nowadays like every domain is data related so you should check whether is there any data related security issues that are part of the application so based on that you will have to do your testing and you have to anonymize your data before you do the testing so you have to make sure that the this is particularly about your test data and moving on to the 13th question which is the environmental factors so here you should ask questions about the hardware configuration and the software dependencies as part of your application like you should check all the about the hardware and the software configurations and the dependencies and then you should also check whether the application is dealing with any third-party integrations so nowadays like we have a lot of api calls and you have to also check with if there are any like third-party api calls or any external services that are part of your application so that you can understand whether they can or they might not impact or whether it's part of the scope or it's out of your scope so all these areas can be identified only when you ask this question so you have to identify what are the third parties that are part of your application and what is the hardware and the software configuration as part of your application so all these questions has to be checked and identified and coming to the 14th question which is the testing environment so if you have to check what infrastructure and tools are available for performance testing whether they're going to do it in a production like environment or whether they're going to do it in a dev or they're going to do it in the same environment where their functional testing and automation testings are done so you have to identify which environment are going to test before you really start doing your scripting so this has to be identified and has to be documented so that you have a clear idea on which environment you're going to test and also you have to check whether you have access to your environment where you're going to create your scripts and where you're going to do your testing so all this access part and all this uh, environment the infrastructure and tools everything should be ready and also has to be identified before you start your scripting and it should be part of your test plan again and then coming to the 15th the part one the final question of part one which is the performance metrics so you should ask the client like what are all the performance key performance indicators that you should document as part of your application so for example the, the some of the clients might ask for your percentiles response time and some of the client might ask you for the minimum maximum average response times and they will also ask you for any monitoring data so in those aspect you should first understand or you should first tell them that these are the uh, key performance indicators i'm going to collect and is that fine and now with this the part one is over so i will meet you in the part two very soon with our next video so until then it's bye bye from Vasan shanmugam and little slaw